Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a dark fantasy film, Patch Town. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with an endorsement video of Patch Enterprise, the Canadian leading toy factory. Patch Enterprise is known for its organic yet high quality, low price products that children genuinely adore. The scene then changes to John, one of Patch Enterprise's overweight factory workers. Along with other factory workers, John removes living babies from magical cabbages, grown on the factory's grounds. After the working hours, the workers go through security, to check if they have taken any cabbage. During the checking, John witnesses how his co-worker gets beaten up by the factory owner, Yuri's guards, for the co-worker was caught stealing one of the cabbages. After beating him up, Yuri's men take him away. John goes home to Patch Town, a worker's village outside the factory. Guilt is written on John's face, as he shares with his wife that he did nothing while his co-worker was getting beat up. The wife consoles her husband with her muscles, as not meddling is the right thing to do in the situation. They then take out their child from the floor. John looks lovingly at his daughter, and sings a French lullaby to her, called Mon Petit Cho, which means my darling. Later that night, John goes to Miles' brothel, and pays him as he is the one who sold the daughter to them. Miles talks to him, and John shares that he has been dreaming about a little girl picking him up, and telling him that she loves him. Miles takes a file from his cabinet, and shows it to John. It has a picture of the little girl, and what she looks like now. Her name is Bethany, she has a daughter named Avery, and she is also John's human mother. Miles explains that the land where the factory now sits, was owned by a Russian toy inventor. One night, the toy inventor hears babies crying, coming from deep in the forest. The toy inventor goes to the forest, and searches for the crying babies, as he is a father himself. He finds dozens of magical cabbages on the ground, where the babies are hatching. His wife died years ago from childbirth, and when he discovered the babies near his place, he thought of it as a way of making amends. He brings them home, and happily shares his discovery with his son, Yuri. However, Yuri does not want any brother or sister, because he wants all of his father's love all to himself. The toy inventor soon realizes that he cannot take care of all of them, so as a talented toy inventor, he discovers a way to keep them all. He invents the machine that freezes the babies, but still keeps them alive. In that way, he turns them into dolls. This continues for years, and as Yuri gets older, his dislike for his father increases. Shame and embarrassment fill Yuri, as the people think of them as child kidnappers. He does not want to have cabbage babies in their homes anymore. But his father insists that the babies are his siblings, which infuriates Yuri. To prove that they are not his siblings, Yuri harshly breaks a doll in front of his father. The toy inventor quickly stops his son, but his old age and illness strike him. Before dying, he passes the responsibility to his son, hoping that he will continue what he has created. Yuri indeed continues his father's legacy, only now does he freeze the babies, and sell the dolls. He builds a factory to widen their market. Yuri kidnaps the forgotten dolls from their homes, and exploits them as factory workers when the business grows. It took a while before Yuri perfected his father's creation, and Miles was his first prototype. The workers do not remember anything, because Yuri wipes all their memories, so they can serve him obediently. Yuri let them believe that what they have is what life all offers. Miles informs John about a shipment that night, and gives him a card he should read aloud to the driver. It is their chance to get out of Patchtown. However, they should be careful, as life out there in the outside world is much worse than in Patch Town. John comes home, and tells his wife that they are leaving tonight. Shortly after, they hear a vehicle arriving, so the two look through their window. They witness how Yuri takes away a baby from a couple, and mercilessly throws it in the trash, as it is a Patch property. Yuri's dwarf henchman reads the Patch Enterprise work of code loudly. It dictates that any worker caught stealing Patch Enterprise property, will be punished and have re-education. As they prepare to leave, Yuri hears John's daughter crying. John and his wife quickly leave their place, before Yuri catches them. They run to the south side of Patch Town, where they meet a transfer truck driver, who is also an Indian doll dressed like a hippie. Meanwhile, Yuri takes Miles and his Polish girlfriend, and re-educated them as punishment for denying that they know John. They refuse to tell him where John is, so Yuri sends them for re-education. Left alone in Miles' office, Yuri discovers that John escapes town to find his mother. During the long drive, John shares with the truck driver his plan to find his mother, who warns him not to forego it. The truck driver gives John candies that affect him like a drug to cheer him up, making him all high. After discovering a photograph of Bethany, Yuri wants to make Bethany be his wife, and build a family with her. He plans to use Avery as a prototype, when they make dolls for teenagers. Yuri becomes sentimental, and shares that he feels lonely, and wishes for someone to share his power with. 
The henchman affectionately offers to be that person, but Yuri shoves him away. After that, Yuri watches as Miles and his girlfriend get re-educated, which is a traditional yet brutal way of erasing memories through electroshock therapy. After hours of driving, they arrive in Toronto, where the truck driver brings them to a rundown public housing project, which had been a recent crime scene. Despite the filthiness of the place, John and his wife have no choice but to accept it. The following day, the truck driver gives them groceries, and takes John to his new job, a Santa Claus. Meanwhile, the henchman sneaks into Bethany's house, and attempts to kidnap Avery. However, she knows Carlotte, so Avery puts up a fight, and engages in a struggle with the henchman. However, the henchman still wins, and he takes Avery to Patchtown. Later that day, while working as a Santa Claus in a mall, John witnesses Bethany devastated and crying on the news, begging for the kidnapper to return Avery to her. Among the crowd, a gay couple informs John and the truck driver that Bethany lives on the same street as they do. They give them directions to Bethany's house. After working, John rushes home, and rambles about Bethany. He tells his wife about what Miles said, about how they were turned into toys, and sold to little girls. John cannot contain his excitement. But the wife firmly tells him that they are not going near Bethany. She argues that they are his home, but John knows they are not enough. There is still a void in his heart, and he needs to meet Bethany to fill it. So he leaves their filthy house, and his devastated wife cries. Concurrently, Avery arrives at Patch Town, where Yuri welcomes her. The henchman explains to Yuri that he did not have time to get Bethany too, as he did not know that Avery would put up a fight with him. Avery cries for her mom, and Yuri replies that he wants her too, before commanding his men to lock her up. On the other hand, the truck driver repeatedly warns John not to go to Bethany's house, and meddles with the police investigation. However, John is hard-headed, and still knocks on the door. Seeing his attire, Bethany dismisses him. However, John's eyes water, as he tells Bethany they know each other. He tells her childhood memories, even mentioning her mother and brother. Bethany opens the door widely, revealing two cops, who have been listening to their conversation. The police arrest John and the truck driver, because of John's innocent yet dumb move. The truck driver hysterically tells them about the Patch Enterprise, and denies any involvement with Avery's disappearance in the interrogation room. As they got no helpful information from the truck driver, the police and Bethany go to John. Bethany calmly talks to John, and pleads with him about where Avery is. John replies that he genuinely has no idea where she is, and he explains they know each other, because he was her doll. John adds the information about Patch Enterprise, but Bethany does not believe it. She thinks of him as a psychotic pedophile, who abducted her daughter. They leave the interrogation room, and go to the other side of the mirror, where Bethany discovers the truth. She hears John singing Moan Petty Cho, the song she used to sing to him when she was a child, and he was a doll. Although it is impossible to believe everything, Bethany realizes that John is her doll. The truck driver and John are taken to a prison cell, while the police convince Bethany to go home, and let them do the work. They inform her that they have to release John and the truck driver, as there is really no substantial evidence that will prove they are the kidnappers. Later that day after their release, the truck driver frustratingly tells John that he will not help them anymore. John has caused trouble with just a few days of being out in the real world. However, he breaks his word when Bethany shows up, and offers them a ride. Bethany shows him a sketch of the henchman, drawn by the police. The neighbors told the authorities that they saw the henchman lurking out, the night Avery went missing. John pleads with Bethany to trust him, because he will explain everything on their way to Patchtown. After discovering the truth, Bethany agrees. But first, they make a stop, as John needs his wife and daughter to come with him. He and the truck driver go to the flat, leaving Bethany downstairs waiting for them. After patching things up with his wife, they go downstairs, only to discover that Bethany has been kidnapped by Yuri's henchmen. As it is a suicide mission to return to Patch Town, the truck driver calls for reinforcement, the rest of the Santa Clauses. They break into the factory, and knock out the guards. John sees Miles and his beaten up co-worker in the factory, so he quietly shouts at them. However, as they turn around and give him a blank face, John realizes that his friends have been re-educated, so they go to a room filled with live footage of the factory. John asks his wife to talk to the workers, in hopes of waking up the human in them, while he and the truck driver go to Avery. The wife successfully wakes up the workers from their nightmare, with her fantastic voice. This causes an alarm, but Yuri does not know it yet, as he is busy. Meanwhile, Bethany arrives at Yuri's office, where she has to have dinner with him to get her daughter back. Yuri tells Bethany that he plans to freeze Avery, make a mold out of her, and sell her plastic copies as he eats. As expected, Bethany disagrees with his plan. 
But then, she stalls Yuri, upon seeing John and others breaking into the factory. She pretends to agree with his plans, tells him that she loves him, and seduces him. However, the henchmen arrive shortly after and interrupts their date, to inform Yuri about the revolt in their factory. Yuri immediately lets go of Bethany, as he sees the revolt from the cameras. As he realizes that she used him, Yuri furiously orders his henchmen to bring Avery to him, so he can freeze her, and turn her into a doll forever. John and the truck driver look for Avery, and he finds her in Yuri's chambers, tied to the conversion machine. As the henchman prepares to attack John, the Santa Clauses and Miles appear behind John's back. The henchman immediately hides like a coward, so Yuri has no choice but to face them himself. Yuri says that he does not want to hurt Avery, he just wants a family of his own. John replies that he cannot have a family, if he continues to instill fear, and force his power on the people around him. This breaks down Yuri, who becomes an emotional wreck. In order to stop his evilness, they re-educate him. Everyone celebrates, as they are now free, and John offers Bethany to live with them in Patch Town. However, she has a family on her own, living in Toronto. Bethany tells John how proud she is of him, for putting a stop to Yuri's evil craziness. She hugs him tight, and says she hopes to meet him again one day. John gets to his wife and daughter, while Bethany takes the truck driver with them as their driver. As they leave the factory, Yuri is still being re-educated, singing Moan Petty Cho. The film ends with a henchman getting the job as an elf after flirting with a clerk, who is also a little person. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.